You are young in soul and body, yet you are not burdened with a large family, you earn good money and you want to drive a powerful, bright, daring car. Only here is the trouble, the same BMW X6 and Mercedes GLC AMG are still categorically inaccessible to you. But perhaps you will find your dream with Infinity FX? To understand whether this crossover can become a replacement for the Germans, let's turn to the owners and listen to what they say about their cars. For the first time, the Infiniti FX was shown at the New York Auto Show in 2002. A car equipped with powerful V6 and V8 was clearly focused on the North American market. But it was with this model that Infiniti began its active expansion into the markets of the old world. However, a year earlier, a concept developed by designer Mamoru Aoki as part of the Bionic Cheetah, Bionic Cheetah theme was demonstrated at the same salon. Mamoru Aoki really managed to create a very bright and memorable image with a hood that takes up almost a third of the length of a rather big car. Technically, the crossover with the factory code S50 was built on the Infiniti FM rear-wheel drive platform with a longitudinal power unit and received an automatically connected front-wheel drive, a fully independent suspension, and powerful engines. By the way, the 370Z Sports Coupe was built on the same platform. But we are interested in the second-generation Infiniti FX, factory code S51, which appeared in 2008. By this time, the model managed to gain worldwide fame, and the concern shifted the focus of market activity from North America to Europe. That is why Geneva was chosen as the venue for the premiere show. The design of the novelty was still carried out by Mamoru Aoki, so that the car retained the main proportions, design finds, and the style of the Bionic Cheetah, that is, a long hood, a habitable volume shifted all the way back, and a clear arched top line of the side glazing, but received headlights of a more complex shape. And a new front-end design. From its predecessor, the car inherited the V-shaped 3.5-liter 6VQ35HR, but the power of this engine was increased from 280 to 307 horsepower. In addition to it, a new V8 VK50VE with a capacity of 400 horsepower was registered under the hood. The previous generation was equipped with a not-so-powerful V8 VK45DE, which produced 320 horsepower, and in 2009 the range of engines was supplemented by the European V6 VQ37 VHR by 3.7 liters and 333 horsepower. Paired with these engines were the classic 7-speed hydromechanical boxes RE7 R01A, in the case of 3.5 and 3.7 liter sixes and re7 or 01b with a 5 liter v8 in addition the front suspension was radically redesigned instead of mcpherson struts dual a arms appeared in 2010 a 3.0 liter v-shaped six-cylinder v9x turbo diesel capable of developing 238 horsepower was added to the range of engines and deliver 550 newton meters of torque this engine designed specifically for european markets was the first diesel in infinity vehicles initially all infinity fx were assembled at a plant in the japanese city of kamenokoa tachijai prefecture but in 2012 given the successful sales in the russian market the model was assembled at the nissan plant in saint petersburg the entire line of the Infiniti FX family had a very rich equipment, and the FX50S version was equipped with an active rear-wheel steering system. The history of the FX model ended in 2014. The car received the designation QX and was produced for another three years. In fact, the car has not changed, so everything said below can be extrapolated to the QX70, although we will concentrate on the Preriform FX. These premium sports crossovers aged 8 to 12 can be bought on the secondary market at a very decent price and often in quite acceptable technical condition. For Diesel FX30D of 2012 to 2013, they asked from 1.25 to 2.35 million rubles for the most common FX37, 2010 to 2013, from 1.1 to 3.3 million, the most powerful and fastest FX50 of 2008 to 2009 are sold for 1.05 to 2.3 million, but the FX35, also 2008 to 2009, cost from 800,000 to 1.7 million rubles. 
it is clear that the purchase of an exceptionally fast car in the secondary market, capable of accelerating to hundreds in 5.7 to 6.9 seconds, can be a lot of fun, but at the same time, it can also deal a serious blow to the pocket. So is it worth the risk? Let's see what their owners write about their iron horses. Hate number five, not a very family car. Unfortunately, not a very family car, in connection with which, in fact, I have to sell, writes the author of one of the reviews. And he has certain reasons for this. The fact is that the only car in the family has to solve many problems from daily trips to work to long-distance vacation trips and delivering elderly parents to the dacha and with seedlings. And here the owners of the Infinity FX will have to deal with a number of design features of this car. Before deciding to buy an FX, we strongly advise you to open the fifth door, take a close look at the luggage compartment and make sure that its volume does not correspond to a nearly 5 meter car, but rather a compact B-Class hatchback 376 liters. Well, since the FX is inherently a fairly youth car, and we'll talk about this later, the issue of transporting baby strollers and other snow scooters is quite acute for young families. Alas, in this regard, FX will not be able to please its owners with anything. Questions are only for the trunk, 380L, the baby stroller barely fits in, while scratching everything around, cons the trunk, it is almost gone. A couple of large bags, and that's it. The baby stroller fits only a cane. A family with two children can fit with reservations on the topic of a small trunk, which not every stroller will fit into. Trunk, it's better to assume that there is none. It took a lot of work for me to shove a pram and a suitcase into it. A small trunk, a pram only fits with unhooked wheels. Young parents complain. But problems also arise in other life situations. The trunk, of course, is small for bulky cargo, but the packages from the supermarket fit clearly. But when it was necessary to change shoes, the wheels, of course, didn't work for me, I had to call my friends in larger cars. In fact, a replacement set of tires, according to other owners, can still be transported, but only by folding the second row seats. Of course, different people relate to the size of the trunk in different ways. Someone assures that the trunk is small, but it is enough. I took relatives to the airport, loaded about nine rather big bags into it. Yes, only bags were visible in the salon mirror, but it was possible to go. The trunk is, yes, small, but it is enough to go to the campsite with two children, that is, for things and food. I don't want to put building materials and other bulky goods in such a car. Someone simply does not care too much about this question, a small trunk. For me, this shortcoming is purely theoretical, since I usually carry a maximum of a sports bag with me. There is almost no trunk, but I didn't take the car for the sake of the trunk, so I somehow don't care. A couple of suitcases or three medium bags will fit there, and okay, I don't drive seedlings to the country, there are two of me and my wife, which is why I took an impractical and with a small trunk, but a stylish car. And all the same, it turns out to be insulting, the trunk is irrelevant to me, but in the same Murinchik, not to mention Audi and Cruzex, it was, but it just was. And in Finnick, the trunk is only for a bucket and a shovel, and preferably a sapper. Again, the cargo capacity of any car can be expanded, so, as the author of one of the reviews wrote, the trunk is modest, but enough for everyday needs, and for long distances you can always throw a Thule box on the roof and take anything with you at all, it took a big move and had to buy a roof rack. I bought the biggest, black and beautiful one so as not to disfigure the handsome one. But in their reviews, the owners directly write, for those who are used to transporting everything in their car, from doors to firewood, the Infinity FX trunk will be a disappointment. The owners are not too pleased with the cabin capacity itself, especially the second row. In terms of practicality, a useless car, only if you drive around the city for the soul. Those who are of a large build will be cramped in the cabin, in fact, a car for two. The rear seats are about the same as in the third row of normal cars. I don't advise taking someone as a third or fourth passenger further than 500 kilometers. This car is for short trips on flat roads for two people, driver and front passenger. For a family, especially with two children, this is not the best option. Rear passengers in the FX feel very uncomfortable when driving on rough roads. 
the developed transmission tunnel, the wheel arches protruding into the passenger compartment, and the lack of legroom interfere, complaints began to come from the rear passengers that there was nowhere to put the feet, the author drives in the maximum lowered seat position. I tried to sit down by myself in winter, indeed, there is a nuance. But most of all, the configuration and size of the rear doors are upsetting, the opening of the rear door is narrow. To comfortably sit or put a child in a car seat, the door must be open to the full, which is not always possible to do. I tried to sit in the back seat, it turned out from the second time, and get out from the third. I mentally rejoiced that it was not for me to go there. So figure out what your elderly parents will say to you or, God forbid, the spouse's parents when they are loaded for delivery to the country. In general, despite the lack of complete unanimity, the collective internet mind comes to the following conclusion, Infinity FX is a car for young, active, and fashionable people who value power, speed, and comfort. It's like an adult crossover, but he hasn't grown up to the uncles yet. A weekend car and long distance trips by a small company, created specifically for a person, and not for cargo or mother-in-law, so if you need to carry boxes in the trunk and use the car as a work car, it won't suit you. Better buy the same Pathfinder and carry refrigerators, washing machines, building materials, etc. there, and look for a minivan for traveling long distances in a big company. Infinity FX has completely different advantages. Love number 5, Bright Appearance. In principle, there can be no unanimity in the assessment of appearance. Nevertheless, the authors of the vast majority of reviews speak of the appearance of the Infinity FX exclusively in an enthusiastic tone. Appearance is space. The most important thing is that the FX has an unusual look, just a bomb. The appearance of the car is a separate song. It has everything, both character and dynamics, at the same time smooth lines, audacity and status. All over the world everyone recognizes this car as very beautiful, I still look in bastard, she is so beautiful that I forgive her even the furiously tough ride, one of the reasons why I bought date is the look. It attracts not only others, but also yourself. This wave shaped hood you drive and admire it almost all the way. In general, there is enough enthusiasm on the net about cunning and predatory Japanese eyes, brutality of clear lines and elegance of style. And this is where the differences begin. Firstly, not everyone likes the design of the Infinity FX, and those who are not enthusiastic about the appearance of the car can be found even among quite loyal owners. The appearance is not for everyone. I'm not very, although I bought it. I can't feel any kind of charisma or something. But my wife, for example, when she sees FX in the stream, she cannot help exclaiming, Lord, what a freak. However, even those who do not like the car do not deny the originality and brightness of the FX design. But this brightness also has a downside, you can get tired of it, I'm morally tired of the aggressive, attention-grabbing appearance, I liked the car at the time of purchase, but now I don't anymore, because the design is already tired. Indeed, in many reviews, the authors write that the car attracts the eyes of even passers-by, even neighbors in the traffic flow, but not everyone thinks that this is so good, you won't be left without attention on the road for sure, if, of course, you need it. And this is second. Thirdly, there are serious differences in assessing the relevance of this design. Some are absolutely sure that this design was ahead of its time and created for decades, it looks great even after 7 years, actual exterior. Despite the fact that more than 10 years have passed since the release of the Infinity FX in 51 bodies, the car still looks very fresh. The Japanese in 2008 came up with a design for decades to come. So now, in 2022, the design of an elegant tank, without a doubt, is admirable. Its uniqueness is that the car of the 2008 model year still looks relevant, while it still has not undergone changes and is sold in fact in the same form. But not everyone thinks so. For years ago, the owners wrote in the reviews that it's time for them to change the body. After all, 10 years, everything is the same, but today many even consider such a design with an exaggeratedly long the hood and the main volumes shifted back are obsolete. Finally, the FX body also has some purely practical drawbacks. Let's leave alone the huge hood, which prevents not too experienced drivers from feeling the dimensions of the car. We will touch on this issue later. 
Much more important is that, according to many owners, Finnick is a pretty messy. The peculiar wedge-shaped front of the car with a small front overhang creates an additional problem in overcoming deep puddles at speeds of more than 40 km h A puddle literally covers the car with a wave. Neighbors down the stream go quietly, and I have to wipe myself with wipers. He comes to put mudguards, the body splashes heavily on the sides and back, and bad weather. The whole thing gets dirty. I haven't seen anything more dirty. The owner's right. This has consequences. If the car is dirty, getting out of it without getting your pants dirty is difficult even if you know how, and if you don't know, it's impossible. However, it is still worth quoting the point of view of one of the owners, who wrote in his review, the design of the date itself is far from ordinary. I know people who can't stand him, but there are those who really like him. There is no average, that is, it evokes emotions in any case. And there will always be those who write, with this car, I had, one might say, love at first sight. When I first saw it on the street, I immediately decided I must take it. For almost 10 years of ownership, neither the appearance nor the interior got tired. Hate number 4, Brake Disc and Paper Pad Issues The problem of brakes in general and brake discs in particular was typical for the first generation FX, S50, and, according to the owners, the Japanese fixed the operational problems with the first generation FX brake system. But, it seems, not to the end, the problem with the brakes has not been corrected, but it has become better. So the problem still remains. The brake discs are very straining. I don't understand why the Japanese have such a big problem with those damn CDs they're driven all the time. I immediately changed all the brake discs and pads to the original ones, and after 2500 km they were driven, so much so that the steering wheel beat at 100 km slash h, I bought new brake discs for 50,000 km since the old ones were killed, but, as you know, the groove does not help. At the next MOT, the wear of the pads was estimated at 50%, and everything would be fine if it were not for the fact that the brake discs should also be changed at the next MOT. How, front the second time? Are they made of chipboard? The operation is moderate. I don't break until the characteristic smell of the pads. The owners do not like the effectiveness of the brakes in general. A complete disregard for the brakes of a car in stock is selective junk. They are not suitable for riding the FX at all. Nissan annealed it by putting single piston calipers and not very large discs on a car weighing two tons. So what to do? Driving slowly and sadly, this option is categorically not suitable for young and energetic owners. No, this is ridiculous. Why did I buy such a car to ride slowly? The problem can be treated in three ways. You can regularly grind brake discs and replace brake pads, but such an operation is not enough for a long time. The second way is to replace the brake discs and pads. You can combine these two approaches, stock up on three to four sets of discs and constantly grind them, that is, work for a car service. And finally, the leader in terms of the amount of money spent and in terms of efficiency is the installation of sports brake kits on the front wheels. It's just that sports discs will cost 30,000 complete sets, along with calipers 10 times more expensive. However, some people are already thinking about replacing the rear brakes, and the descriptions of the cars for sale include installed sports wheels, such as IP Racing or Akabano brakes. In addition, experienced owners recommend carefully monitoring the amount of lubricant on the caliper fingers. After buying a car, you need to move the anther on the caliper finger yourself or at the service and fill it with grease. Insufficient amount of grease causes the fingers to stick, move with difficulty or not move at all, as a result of which the pads remain in a clamped state and the discs begin to burn very quickly. But the owners of the FX50 note another problem. Somewhere at 60% wear of the pads, the brake system malfunction light starts blinking while the brake fluid level remains normal. And everything would be fine, but after a few seconds, the stabilization and the steering mechanism of the rear wheels turn off. Another issue is with the naturally aspirated VQ35HR and VQ37VHR petrol engines. In general, the owners characterize them as trouble-free and exceptionally reliable, but they also have their own Achilles heel paper oil channel gaskets. 
by about 200,000 kilometers, or even earlier, these gaskets can be squeezed out, followed by the inevitable oil starvation and dire consequences, the engine starts to quickly kill itself, and the crankshaft bully usually becomes the final cord. And worn camshafts, shaft beds and the cylinder head, severe piston wear will leave no chance for inexpensive repairs. All this is aggravated by the fact that the motors do not have oil level sensors, and its presence and condition can only be assessed by looking under the hood and pulling out the dipstick. Replacing paper gaskets with metal ones costs about 30 to 40,000 rubles on a turnkey basis. On so many cars for sale, this operation has already been done, and owners of cars with diesel V9X and 5 liter V8 VK50 VE need not worry at all. Love number four, salon, ergonomics, review, and equipment. Almost 100% of owners express in their reviews complete satisfaction with the comfort in the cabin, especially for the driver and front passengers. First of all, they note the chic, in their words, sports chairs with additional controlled hip and torso support and adjustable knee support. In such chairs, you can spend more than one hour behind the wheel. The maximum distance traveled behind the wheel without a brake is 2,000 kilometers, without problems and stress. Even after 10 hours behind the wheel, the back feels great. You don't get tired on long runs, seats with good support and a retractable leg cushion, and in addition, with ventilation. There are no complaints about the relative position of the controls. The steering column is adjustable for reach and height with memory, seat adjustment with memory. In addition to the standard settings, the lateral support of both the upper and lower parts of the seat is also adjustable. In terms of ergonomics, everything is super, everything is at hand, very convenient. Seat adjustments behind the eyes. Slightly, of course, the steering wheel adjustment ranges for reach are small, but these are already nitpicking. They say that at a certain position of the steering wheel, some of them overlap part of the tidy, but my adjustments do not overlap. The owners fully approve of the quality of the materials used to decorate the salon. Here, dear reader, this is the realm of an Arab sheik. Designers from the land of the rising sun eat their bread for good reason. Genuine perforated leather, soft plastic, aluminum-like inserts. I don't see any reason to argue about wood-like inserts, but against the general background, they are also categorically magnificent. The quality is excellent. Everything is done very nicely and carefully adjusted. The design does not cause a feeling of old-fashionedness. Although the car is not new, skin, wood, sunroof, display, music, everything is fine. The perforated leather is of very high quality. I weigh 110 kilograms, and it holds it. It blows when it's hot. The backlight is pleasant. Everything pleases. Every time I come up to her, as if I bought it yesterday. Most of all, the analog clock fascinates in the interior. Everyone who sits inside pays attention to it. Of course, there are some complaints. For example, there are complaints that only the driver got the electrically adjustable lumbar support, they say, the Japanese saved. Or no heated steering wheel. Or simple plastic buttons that migrated from the Nissan X-Trail, or maybe even from the Micra. And there are a lot of these buttons the equipment is rich but the scattering of buttons especially in the area of backslash u 200b backslash u 200b left knee is surprising don't expect intuitive controls as in the same volvo you will have to study the manual this does not cause great inconvenience but it is worth paying attention all of a sudden it will be something radically uncomfortable for you Normal russification has not been done in the phone book, as a result of which you cannot select a contact by letter, but are forced to scroll through the entire list. But these are all trifles. There are much more complaints about the operation of the air conditioning system. The climate control sometimes works strangely, apparently, it somehow takes into account the flow of sunlight and adds cold. As a result, fixing 22 degrees, I get either snow whirlwinds around my head, or stuffy air. At the same time, for some reason, in auto mode, the climate itself decides that it is not necessary to blow into the legs, and turns off if you say what you need, the temperature sensor is crooked, as a result of which the cold goes when set to 16 degrees, and at 17 degrees the air it is no longer cool, but warm. Again, the owners grumble at the seat heating system. In FX, it's not just warmers. 
Heating is carried out using the same system as ventilation in the heat, just the air is already warm. So, the owners complain that the heating starts only after the engine warms up. And it also happens that the airflow of the passenger seat turns off literally after two minutes. It turns out that the disease of all these machines. It is solved by disassembling the seat and additional cutouts in the soft cushion, without which air simply does not pass, and the ventilation system turns off. The owners do not speak too highly of sound insulation either. No. They don't scold her abusively, they just grumble that she could be better in a premium brand car. Soundproofing, frankly, is SOSO, despite the fact that I immediately made an additional noise. The noise of the wheels does not penetrate into the cabin strong, but somewhat more than expected, noise isolation from the factory is weak. I made a new, high quality one, now it's comfortable. I'll mention sound insulation as a weak point, but the issue of additional noise in the service is being solved since there are no problems with this now. In principle, Shunka arches and doors are already giving results. In addition, some lack of noise isolation is compensated by the excellent Bose speaker system. Bose music plays well. The sound of the Bose system was a huge plus for me. And the fathers of families really like the presence of an entertainment system for rear passengers. DVD with wireless headphones for rear passengers is a very good and useful thing, especially for children, because I consider this device necessary in the car. One children's film is enough for 100 to 150 kilometers of a serene and calm way along the highway. As for visibility, there is no complete unity here. Someone admires the informative, large and wide side mirrors, while someone complains that the view in the side mirrors is too small and that a large dead zone appears. Someone argues that behind the wide A pillars, in accordance with the global trend, and a strip of dirt that the wipers cannot reach, even a pedestrian or a car may well hide, the view around the car fell victim to the beauty of the body design, there are enough dead zones. Separately, the situation is annoying in winter, when the wiper leaves a dirty strip on the left side of the windshield, not catching up with the dirt to the left edge. Together with the left pillar, this dirt once hit an SUV moving across at low speed for me. They immediately object, the racks are really healthy, but they don't bother me personally because the seat is moved back. I have never experienced problems with Phoenician visibility. As we have already noted, a long hood with swollen fenders creates some problems when parking. Due to the swollen front fenders, it took me a long time to get used to the dimensions, although my experience is 15 years, 300,000 kilometers on different cars. Not even to the dimensions, but to understanding the place where the right front fender ends. It surprised. But any maneuvers are greatly helped by the all-round viewing system, camera in a circle, top view of the car on the monitor is an indispensable thing in Moscow. I climbed into such holes, it is unlikely that anyone will compete. Cameras often get dirty, this is Moscow, he went out, wiped it with a napkin, and happiness. I know that there are options that the guys put washers on them. In compensation, very good cameras help with parking both day and night, there are no problems with parking, parking sensors, coupled with cameras, do their job. I really like the helicopter view, in dry, clean weather, parking is a pleasure. But even here there are grumblers. Indeed, parking sensors are far from being available in all trim levels, but, according to the owners, they are still needed, without parking sensors, regardless of the camera, especially the front one, it's bad. It's a shame to put Chinese crafts on an expensive, in general, car, parking sensors are clearly not enough for this car given the lack of a normal view both front and rear. But most importantly, the authors of the reviews are sure that it is almost impossible to find a more richly equipped car for the same money, which cars for a comparable budget have all-round cameras, an adaptive cruise with a radar, seat ventilation, electric steering wheel adjustments and a bunch of goodies, and that's all still correct? Hate number three, stiff suspension and soft glass. A lot of reviews mention the Infinity FX stiff suspension. Only the assessment of this rigidity differs. Some believe that it's harsh, they tighten the suspension, of course, on a good road it's great, but if there are pits, the suspension is quite stiff. A person who owned, say, a Subaru WRX will not be surprised, 
but a lover of American sofas will be horrified of the minuses a stiff suspension, especially the rear one. Recumbents have to drive extremely slowly, although maybe this is how it should be in a sports crossover, comma for me, one of the reasons for thinking about changing the car was just the stiffness of Finnick. While you drive around the city in a short time during the day, you don't really feel it, but with long hauls it's very noticeable. Others believe that everything is fine, the suspension is really stiff, but this does not interfere with anything, the suspension is harsh, just what you need it goes through the pits normally and flops not so hard. But if you take off at a speed of 140, then you will not crash weakly, since the suspension travel is short, personally, the stiffness of the suspension does not bother me, I even think it's better. You really feel the wheelbarrow as a fifth point, and in this car you definitely won't get sick, the rigidity is optimal, I don't like very soft cars, the car is tough, especially in summer, on 22 discs. For many, this is a minus, and a miracle is expected from the car won't happen but i really like the stiffness comfort it is here but not like in the tahoe or premium sedans the suspension is quite stiff and many call it furious but do not exaggerate just a stiff suspension in any case much depends on individual perception so experienced owners advise i can only warn future buyers if you put up with the stiffness of the suspension then the car will please you but to test your sensations, ride along the road with bumps, waves, and the like in the back seat at high speed. But the owners consider the windshield to be too soft. The car has soft glass, I confirm it 100%. I changed the windshield on the whole twice, from each tangible blow to the glass there are points, and everything would be fine, but the wipers quickly deteriorate from them, I have never seen this, I change the brushes almost every two or three months, and still everything striped glass. Everything is covered with pebbles and damned sand, and sunny weather you can't see a damn thing. I drive into a tunnel or into a parking lot by feel, hoping that no one's expensive ass is standing there. I thought about polishing, but the chips were too deep. It's good that Casco allows you to change one part once a year without certificates. The situation is aggravated by the fact that the designers abandoned the washer nozzles directly on the windshield wipers, as on the first generation FX, there the liquid flowed directly to the rubber bands, which eliminated several strokes on dry glass. On machines of the S51 generation, there are nozzles of the usual type, and even those that do not work in the best way. In winter, I got tired of changing the brushes. The washer does not pour on all the glass and is not properly regulated. He himself did not notice how the windshield had already been rolled. How cool it was on the old date. It poured right on the brushes. Love number three, on the highway and in the city. Dynamics and speed, speed and dynamics. That's what the owners appreciate the Infinity FX with any engine options. Even the slowest of the family, the diesel FX30D, accelerates to hundreds in 8.3 seconds as a result the owners of these cars are quite satisfied the dynamics is enough in the city in 99 percent of cases outside the city in 95 percent but i immediately noticed that i was already 50 and i ate traffic lights back in the 90s dynamics the plane the road holds chic on a paid leningradka or new riga 200 to 210 confidently at the traffic lights all the jeeps are in the region of 3.5 liters and the diesel engine is behind and for owners of gasoline cars that can really bullet fx35 accelerates to 100 kilometers slash h in 6.9 seconds fx37 in 6.8 and fx50 in 5.7 seconds it's a sin to complain at all so they don't complain he really takes off on the track overtaking is his element he does it confidently, without strain, the 3.7 liter engine is very powerful, torsional. There is always a margin for traction and at any speed, in the city and on the highway. It can smoothly calmly drive at low speeds, it can explode from a traffic light and go to the point, everything is beautiful and chocolate, as golden youth say. Phoenix is just the thing. And it can leave the traffic light and there is always a reserve of power at any speed after 100 kilometers slash h the dynamics are still excellent overtaking on the highway is a pleasure 
In their reviews, the owners note the coordinated work of the adaptive 7-speed gearbox and motors, the adaptive gearbox is just super, it adapted to me, and its reaction impresses me. I haven't had this yet, the engine and gearbox sing a duet, sometimes it seems that the variator, there are enough speakers, I like the automatic transmission. It seems to me that the best acceleration algorithm consists of two presses on the gas pedal, first, light, speed increases, then, after a moment, strong the car shoots, the box sticks everything in time. Very highly adaptive. You drive smoothly and slowly, in a traffic jam, for example, it shifts smoothly and slowly, the gears jump at 2000 RPM. You drive fast and sharply, it turns up to six to 7,000 revolutions, the car flies. To go from a smooth ride to a frisky one, we press sharply on the gas or gas brake gas a couple of times, the automatic transmission quickly understands what is needed from it. But the owners are quite skeptical about the possibility of manual control of the gearbox, steering column gear shifters are convenient, although it is almost impossible to beat a high-speed automatic, in my opinion, steering paddles seem nothing more than a toy, I practically don't use it. At the same time, the owners note that the speed in the car is not felt, there is even some minus in this, you can unnecessarily relax out of habit, you drive 120 km slash h as if you were driving 20 km slash h. At speed, the owners understand that it is not in vain that they suffer from the furiously stiff suspension. This is a price for excellent handling, there is nothing to complain about, the steering wheel provides precise control of the trajectory of movement and is pleasant in sensations, you drive along the highway, rest against a Cruzac or RX, for some reason they immediately start to pick up speed, but at the first small turn they always slow down to 80 to 100, and FX does not need it at all. Accordingly, you overtake, taxiing with one hand, and there the driver grabbed the steering wheel with both hands, as if he was participating in races. In general, handling's five points, comma this rather big car is controlled perfectly, the steering wheel is quite tight and informative, it enters turns like a passenger sedan. The FX50 is especially good in this regard with its rear wheel steering system, the handling is not like a crossover, but like a sports sedan. It holds the road superbly, at 130 per turn, there is nothing to do, the rear wheels are steered, and you fly in like clockwork. It is clear that RAS, Automatic Rear Wheel Steering System, manifests itself only with active maneuvering at high speed. In this case, the trajectory set by the steering wheel is more accurate than on a normal car. But the management of the Infinity FX has its own characteristics, especially in winter. In normal mode, this is a rear-wheel drive car, but even in complex ones, the front-wheel drive is connected not immediately, but with some delay, as well as the stabilization system, he drags his ass in winter, so the connected front-wheel drive has one name, does not have time to pick up properly, full drive on Finike for the winter is really dumb, especially for people who are not prepared and have never ridden in a rear-wheel drive before. This is a fact. If you are not used to rear-wheel drive, do not turn off the stabilization, especially on a slippery road. By lightly pressing the gas in a turn, the car goes into a skid perfectly. But as soon as you feel the car, there will be no desire to turn it on. Indeed, many believe that it is such an all-wheel drive system that allows an experienced driver to get the most out of it. For me, skidding is better than demolition of the front axle. Here, the drift is small and you can get out of the skid on traction, there is an intriguing feature, on a slippery road, when you press the gas, it first starts to lead the rear axle a little, and only then it connects in front and straightens the trajectory. I would even classify this as a plus, electronics does not intervene immediately, which, when pedaling hard on snow or ice, gives a prepared person joy, and an unprepared person longing and pants full of unpleasant impressions. This does not cause any problems with reasonable winter operation, you just need to remember that you have 2 tons in your hands, initially rear wheel drive and 333 horses, to be honest, I often press this button at the bottom left VDC off in order to properly enter into a turn in a rear wheel drive car and finally feel it on ice. But we must pay tribute, if you go in the usual mode, it is very difficult to throw it into a skid it resists, an infection. And on the track, rear-wheel drive is good. 
As for the capabilities of the car outside the asphalt, the authors of the reviews agreed that you can move off the road, but very carefully. Believing in the super off-road capabilities of the car, I decided to drive through a puddle of tension. The result is logical. We managed to drive a little further than the middle. The rear wheels in this nice liquid sit almost on the hub. The front ones by 15 to 20 centimeters. Obstacles can only be crossed by moving. Vnatyag FX can't drive. Infinity FX is not an off-road car, that's a fact. But it all depends on the driver behind the wheel. He climbed on it into the snowdrifts, in which the doors do not open, and drove out without anyone's help. And he needed some good mud in the forest, also in order. Of course, he won't be able to hang three wheels, and he won't go fishing somewhere in Yakutia. The off-road capabilities of the FX are quite enough for everyday use, even if you need to stir the dirt a little. At the same time, the capabilities of diesel cars are somewhat higher than those of gasoline ones. It is generally believed that the FX is generally contraindicated to move off the asphalt, but a diesel engine is allowed, within reason. I went on a muddy primer and on virgin snow and hung it out so that the rear wheel was a meter from the ground. All okay. Well, in the city, FX owners feel very confident, including in winter. In winter, you still drive where others skid and swear helplessly. On a snowy road, the car goes quite confidently. It leaves the yards littered with snow with a banged comma cross-country ability suits me. You need to understand that this is a crossover, not a full-size Jeep. I'm not going to ride it through the swamps, but jump onto the curb, park in an unclean parking lot, and overcome easy off-road in his power. I didn't check the cross-country ability, but, again, this is definitely not an all-terrain vehicle. This is a beautiful car for the city, comfortable. However, given the all-wheel drive, you can feel confident in winter, does not pretend to be an off-road vehicle for swamps, but has never got stuck in any snowdrift. Of course, in the city you have to take into account the dimensions of the car. But during maneuvers, the automatically lowering side mirrors and the all-round viewing system also help. Yes, the resolution of the camera is not the ultimate dream, but, gentlemen, there is an all-round view. I can see everything perfectly, I can cuddle up to the curb without scratching the rims, and drive in a narrow yard, perfectly watching the approach of the front bumper to the obstacle. Yes, the picture is a bit grainy. But I can see everything and navigate perfectly, and the turning radius is not so great for a car with a length of 4.8 meters and a wheelbase of 2.85 meters, it is 5.9 meters. Hate number two, fuel consumption. The vast majority of reviewers are aware that under the hood of their cars there is a whole herd, and not some ponies, but full-fledged trotters, and this herd needs to be fed. And still, only the owners of diesel FX30DS are satisfied with the fuel efficiency. Most of all, I was pleased with the fuel consumption. In winter with all heating, stoves, and other things on the highway, 7.6L slash 100 kilometers. In the city and traffic jams, a little more. About 10.6L slash 100 kilometers. Fuel consumption in general, I consider it good. The city is about 13 to 14. This is pushing in traffic jams in the center. The highway is about 9 to 10 L slash 100 kilometers. Consumption in the city is 11 liters. Without saving. On the highway 8.5 liters. Fuel consumption in the city 10 to 13 liters. On the highway 7 to 9 liters in Moscow. With daily operation I refuel no more than once a week. But mostly once and a half. I usually do not I drown. And therefore the average consumption is 9 liters. Which is very good. It is clear that for different drivers the figures are somewhat different, but their order is the same, less than 10 liters on the highway, a little more than 10 in the city. But everyone is pleased with the fuel autonomy. The cruising range on the highway on one tank in almost any mode is 1,000 kilometers. If you feel sick and save money, you can stretch 1,200 kilometers. Somehow, I drove 3,000 kilometers in three days, and with trips to cities, and even got stuck in traffic jams. I drove all this distance on three tanks. But the owners of the FX35 frankly attribute the expense to significant disadvantages. This is understandable, the power is less, the dynamics are worse than those of the FX37, and even more so than that of the FX50, and the consumption is almost the same. 
in principle, the authors of the reviews are ready to agree on the figure of 17 L slash 100 kilometers, but many argue that it can be much more. High fuel consumption is largely related to urban driving in a sluggish mode, traffic lights, traffic jams, about 20 L, gasoline guzzled in Moscow at least 17 liters, and an average of about 20 liters per hundred. In the regions, I generally ate 20 to 25, since gasoline is bad. Owners of 5-liter FX50S, as a rule, do not discuss consumption much. What is there to discuss in particular? They knew what they were getting into by buying this powerful horse, and were ready to feed him. Accordingly, they perceive a consumption of about 20 L slash 100 kilometers with Olympic calmness, pasted an American sticker to hell with fuel economy on the rear window, and enjoy life. However, this appetite can be curbed. To do this, you just need to step on the throat of your driver's temperament, not take off from the spot, as at the start of a highway ring race, but follow traffic rules on the track and use cruise control more often. I managed to achieve 11.2 L slash 100 kilometers on the track once. There is a photo from the phone. Consumption on the track pleased. The Rally St. Petersburg. Helsinki and back took only 115 liters, 13.5 per hundred. I expected the worst. But the owners of the most massive FX37 are very fond of arguing about consumption, and they give very different numbers, guys, who writes that the consumption of an Infinity FX37 on the highway is September 6th, 10 liters, tell me how you do it. I could not get. On average, my consumption on the highway showed within 12 to 14.6 liters. This is taking into account accelerations when overtaking, braking, and standing at traffic lights and railway crossings. But in urban conditions, everything is much sadder. Friends, 19 to 23 liters. Consumption in the city is 19 to 21 liters, no less. All the talk about 15 to 17 liters is not true. Let me explain. The fact is that if you are fond of dynamic driving, and it will not work slowly on it, and you are in traffic jams, the consumption will be just that. The track is 14 to 16, it's quite real, horse gasoline consumption, I think, at the same time on the highway, 120 to 160 kilometers slash H, from 11 to 14 liters per 100 kilometers, which is a total of 333 maris and 3.7 liters worthy. But in the city, like the BTR80, traffic jams, air conditioning, a sneaker on the floor, and it reaches 23 L slash 100 kilometers, a 10-year-old car has a normal consumption, 20 to 22 liters with a sneaker on the floor, and vegetable mode 18 liters. I can attach a photo. Well, I don't believe that engines of 333 and 400 forces eat 14 liters, a priori this is impossible. Economists argue with them, I admit that each car has its own appetite. Seven years of owning FX37, track speed 108 to 109, pensioner driving style due to the availability of video recording of speed violations for the traffic police, consumption 10.8 to 11.2 liters. At a speed of 140 kilometers slash H with a cruise, the consumption is 11.2 liters. Urban, mixed mode, 14 liters per 100 kilometers, 14.6 L slash 100 kilometers in the city in winter due to traffic jams. You don't need to argue with me. I don't believe in FX consumption of 20 liters or more and never will. One way or another, Infinity FX with atmospheric gasoline engines consume quite a lot of fuel. The mileage on one tank is about 500 kilometers, and it takes at least 10 to 12,000 rubles a month to buy fuel. How much these costs will hit your wallet everyone decides for himself. But in any case, you can take comfort in the fact that you are not threatened with additional oil costs. Motors usually do not eat up oil until death, and even owners of 10-year-old cars do without topping up oil from replacement to replacement. Love number two, emotionality. A lot of reviewers, talking about their cars, focus not on speed, handling, or convenience for the driver, but on the emotions that the possession of this car gives. Sometimes these are short, 
but very capacious phrases, an excellent sports car that gives a bunch of vivid emotions from dynamic, comfortable, and, most importantly, predictable driving. In one hour you part with money and get yourself a friend, but what's there a friend, a native brother the car Infinity FX, only positive emotions, feelings of management a complete delight, for inexpensive, you can ride with emotions. Brief results are as follows, truly, the Phoenician is the chariot of the gods. Ride, and mouth to ear, appearance, dynamics, roar V6, wow. If you are young at heart, then it will not leave you indifferent. In a word, Infinity FX is a concentration of bright positive emotions that compensate for many shortcomings and make you forget about expenses. But the owners warn, when choosing this car, do not be led by emotions from the appearance and nameplate power. They have to be fed, they have to be steered, and you have to pay for all this. This is first. And secondly, Infinity FX is not only an emotion car, but also a provocateur car, and it is far from always worth succumbing to these provocations. Hate number one, tax, insurance, and maintenance. Almost every second owner names the size of the transport tax among the most significant shortcomings of the Infinity FX. Indeed, in Moscow and St. Petersburg, FX35 owners have to pay 46,050 rubles annually, FX37 owners 49,950, and FX50 60,000, and it's good that so much until recently this model was on the list of cars subject to luxury tax. Only owners of diesel FX30DS are more or less calm about the issue of tax. They have to pay 17,850 rubles each. And if 10 years ago, when FX were quite expensive, but cheaper than many direct competitors, such amounts seemed quite tolerable to buyers, now, when a used sports crossover can be purchased even by a person with a not the highest income, such payments can become real problem. Of course, some will still think that the tax is a perfectly acceptable payment for what they receive from the car. It's easier for me to realize that I have a resource engine with forged camshafts than to enjoy tax savings. Yes, the tax is almost 50,000 rubles, but I decided for myself, while young, why not? Why do I need 6,333 horses and such a car? If you bought this car, then I think it will not be difficult to pay 50,000 a year of the minuses I can name only tax and expense. But, as they say, a person who buys such a car should not worry too much about it. Comparing a date with classmates, I realize that in one case you pay a tax and don't worry about anything, in another you pay for the repair of turbines, pneumatics, electric rails, robots, and so on, the owners write in their reviews, and there are quite a few statements of this kind. But there are also those who are really worried about the amount of tax. I'm mentally tired of a tax of 50,000 rubles, and I just rolled over. Yes, at first everything makes me happy as dynamics, comfort. And then I get tired of paying a tax of 45 to 60,000 per year. But it's not just the transport tax that you have to pay. You will have to take out compulsory insurance, and its cost is affected not only by the experience of accident-free driving, but also by power. And the authors of the reviews call the price of casco just cosmic. A couple of years ago, for example, up to 650,000 rubles were asked for this service. But even in 2022, the owners believe that the options found at a price of 80,000 to 100,000 rubles are a great success. In fact, it turned out to be possible to buy a good option, a little over 100,000 for a complete set for a year with adequate coverage and service without a franchise, this is without theft, I defended myself from it differently. But many people believe that it is simply impossible to drive on our roads without a comprehensive insurance, a drunken fool without money and without a license can easily leave anyone without a car worth hundreds of thousands of rubles, the price of insurance is not commensurate with a possible loss. Finally, the cost of service. Here the owners also give very different figures, from 10 to 15 to 40,000. Naturally, they are looking for cheaper service. In general, I paid 23,000 rubles for 260, instead of the 37,000 rubles offered by phone. Infinity has a generally inhumane price tag, up to 45 to 47,000 rubles. Of course, there are always options to save money. For example, you can buy the necessary consumables on the internet, 
or you can be serviced not at Infinity branded service stations, but at Nissan stations. I recommend servicing only in Nissan, 1.5 or even 2 times cheaper, personally verified. For example, a Nissan cabin filter, 1200 rubles, Infinity, well, with the smell of a cherry seed, 6245 rubles. Prescribed pressure sensors, 1000 rubles, Nissan, 2400 Infinity. Comments are unnecessary. The same applies to current repairs. Yes, original glasses and body parts are very expensive, but at least in the case of glasses there are quite adequate replacement options. An original windshield costs about 60,000 rubles. But there is almost always an alternative, for example, I installed excellent glass for 5,000 rubles and paid 2,500 for installation. But in any case, a person who decides to buy a used Infinity FX should think it over well and compare possible expenses with their income. There are even statements on the internet that in order to adequately maintain the Infinity FX, it is necessary to receive in the region of 35 to 45,000 rubles a month. To me, such estimates seem unreasonably optimistic. To be honest, I can hardly imagine a person who is ready to give one monthly salary as a transport tax, spend a couple more salaries on gasoline, and spend even 25 to 20,000 a couple of times a year on current repairs and maintenance. Yes, Infinity FX promises the owner a lot of pleasure, but you have to pay quite serious money for these pleasures. Love number one, reliability. The owners of all models of the family consider reliability to be the most important advantage of the Infinity FX. Those who bought the car new in the cabin think so, and so do the owners of cars that have already been in the wrong hands, 120,000 mileage, zero problems. I will summarize, an absolutely problem-free car, comma a car made in 2012, 3.7 gasoline, mileage 127,000. Only the front hub bearing has changed, the rest are consumables, comma, and the most important thing is reliability. I only changed consumables. Comma, for eight years of operation, there were no serious breakdowns, comma, I have owned a car for more than six years, not a single problem, like new to this day, comma, I took it with a mileage of 60,000, hit another 40, all the time I only changed consumables, for 250,000 kilometers I changed the racks in a circle, twice, wheel bearings twice, and that's all. Such statements can be cited literally endlessly. The praises of reliability are also heard in the reviews written in 2015 to 2016, both last and this year, rape and responsibly change the oil. For three years we drove 90,000 kilometers, but I don't remember even the most innocent problems, there are no problems in this car, that is, the chassis does not crumble, the electronics are in order, the timing does not need to be changed, since the chain, the box is very reliable, only the oil needs to be changed every 60,000 kilometers, the engine is also reliable, indestructible aspirated with a huge margin of safety, tuning kits for the 370Z, which are put on the stock engine, just to see. A box, a reinforced version of which was installed on Nissan Titan with a maximum permitted weight of 3,300 kilograms, energy intensive suspension, unpretentious electronics. Of course, anything can be broken, but the prerequisites for the accidental failure of various expensive components are at least. The authors of the reviews assure that with quality service, the car takes care of up to 300,000 kilometers without a single major repair, without spending a couple of years in the service, and without ruining the owner. And yet, there are enough cars on the market with dubious documents, and with twisted mileage, and simply shabby specimens, if only because such cars are taken precisely in order to drive, and drive them in the tail, and in the main, far not always following the rules of service. And when buying, you should carefully check the car for crime. These cars were often stolen, interrupted by VIN, issued false documents, so the check will not be superfluous. Of course, you can put in order a rolled copy in not the best technical condition, but this will require very serious investments. So experienced owners write, my advice to you, if you take this car, check the oil, take it to the dealer for diagnostics, check all the levers and the rail, and how, if there are doubts about the operation of the automatic transmission or something in general, refuse to buy. 
Although they say that the date is not particularly expensive to repair and maintain, this is all nonsense. Dear, we would advise only those who have a great desire to have this particular car, who can do many operations with their own hands, who has a resource in the form of their own, or simply accessible, car service and who is willing to spend their own time looking for the right components at an affordable price. But those who overcome all the problems will receive a solid reward for their work a fast, powerful, bright and stylish car that will not only give driving emotions, but will not require special investments for a long time.